So, I fired up YouTube a few days ago and scrolled through the old algorithmically generated feed, seeing if Google had anything interesting for me to watch. And as I spun that grid of thumbnails up the screen, the title of a video caught my eye because it was called The Real Reason Your Photography Edits Look Amateur. And if I'm being brutally honest with you guys, and you know, I like to keep it honest, then it was the word amateur that caught me eye because, let's face it, you need to be a fairly cocksure, battle-hardened pro to use words like that. So I watched the video and ironically, the dude gave some of the most amateurish photography advice I've heard in a long time. There are some great photography channels here on YouTube and maybe this guy is strong in other areas. But a lot of his tips sounded like he was badly paraphrasing stuff he'd heard in other people's videos. And one of his tips on the subject of photo export settings was absolute bollocks. So if you're confused by the settings you should use when exporting your photos, perhaps because you watched a video by a photography pro, then please allow this amateur to explain all. Before we get into this one, I'd just like to say that I didn't set out to roast this particular content creator, but I can't help feeling that he invited some robust criticism of his content, thanks to the title of his video and most of its contents. If you're going to classify yourself as a pro and give guidance on how to avoid amateurish mistakes, then I think you need to be very sure of your facts before hitting that record button. The advice that the content creator dispensed regarding calibration sliders, clarity, the transform tool, masking, and export file sizes were all a bit questionable. But the tip that raised my eyebrows concerned exporting JPEGs and the ideal settings to use when out of putting your photos in Lightroom. There was a lot of misinformation in that one overall tip. But to begin with, he suggested that you output just one single file type for all your exporting needs. In other words, according to this dude, whether it's for social media, for your online portfolio, or for print, you can just have one single set and forget export profile that covers all of those situations. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Except that's a load of old pony. You should definitely utilize multiple profiles for your exports in whatever photo editor you use. Three at an absolute minimum. One for social media, one for your online portfolio, and one for print. And we'll get into the best settings you should choose for each of those profiles in a minute. The next bit of shonky advice that the content creator gave in his video was to always set your JPEG quality slider to 100%. He claimed that if you drop the slider below 100, your photos were, quote, not going to look good. This is complete bollocks, and I will prove it. I output one of my photos at various JPEG compression settings, and we're going to pixel peep them in Lightroom so you can see what compression does and doesn't do to an image. I've output the same photograph four times at 100% compression in JPEG, 80%, 60%, and I've also done 100% at 300 ppi, which we'll get onto in a bit. But for starters, here are the two images. So here's a 100 versus 80. And as you can see at this res and looking at this size, which to be honest is how you would view it on pretty much any website, absolutely identical, no difference between them whatsoever. We can zoom in, let's go down to this bit here. What are we at now? We're at uh, 100%. If we go into an area where we might be able to spot the compression more, we may find out more. So let's go up to the top here where this rainbow is. And it's where you've got those kind of subtle shades sometimes that maybe may be able to spot the compression. So let's zoom in a little bit further. 200%. 
still nothing. I can't see any difference between these two photographs at all. Oh. Now, I realize you guys are watching this on YouTube, possibly on a tiny little screen, so you'll probably have to take my word for it. Although I will include a link to these actual files that you can download to your own computer and compare them yourself. And you'll see that I am telling you straight up facts. There's no difference between them. Let's go even further. Maybe we'll be something at, say, 400%. No, they're identical. There's literally no difference between these two at all. 400%. At 80% compression, you're saving about two-thirds of the file size. So it's a no-brainer. Okay, well, let's flick out the 80% one and put a 60% in. I'm expecting to see some differences now. But at this scale, zoomed out as we are, again... There's no difference between these two photos. No shade difference, no color differences. I'm not seeing any mottling at this size. Let's go to 100%. And I can see some differences up in the clouds here. This area right here is different. You can make out the kind of edges of the clouds, whereas at 100%, it's a beautiful smooth gradient. So there you go. We found our first difference at 60%. Now, as I mentioned in there, YouTube does have some heavy compression. So if you want to see those photos yourself, I've also uploaded them to me. Google Drive, links in the description. I defy anyone to find a difference between a JPEG output at 80% compression and one output at 100% compression. They are, to all intents and purposes, identical in all but one important way. The photo saved at 80% compression will be about two-thirds the file size of the 100% version. That file saving might seem insignificant, but it's important if you're sharing online because it means it will load faster and therefore your website will be quicker and it will therefore rank better in Google. Once you knock JPEG compression down to that 60% mark, you will start noticing a little bit of artifacting, but only if you pixel peep. For uploading to social media or general use on websites or newsletters, 60% compression is fine and beneficial to search indexing. Next up, the third slice of half-baked advice from our pro content creator, resolution settings. Specifically, he recommended changing the default from 240 to 340 pixels per inch before uploading to social media because, and I quote, this is going to allow you to get a high-definition image. Now, the thing is this. That PPI box in Lightroom is irrelevant for screen display. It stands for pixels per inch, and it literally only affects how big an image prints, not how big it looks on a screen. On a monitor, a pixel is a pixel. All screen displays, monitors, smartphones, screens, TVs, they don't care whether an image was exported at 72, 240, or 300 ppi. That number only has relevance to print because it tells the printer how many pixels to print in each square inch of paper. So 72 ppi will look lower resolution than 300 ppi, for instance. All right, pixel peepers, we are back in Lightroom, and I'm going to show you the difference between a 72 ppi image and a 300 ppi image and we're going to go straight into heavy hitter pixel peeping territory and we're going to go to 400 percent and there will be literally no difference between these images they're going to be identical that is because this number this ppi this pixels per inch that is only of relevance to printers displayed on a screen one pixel equals one pixel. Nothing you can do in the resolution box set to 72, 240, 300 will make any difference whatsoever as to how that image looks. So if a content creator tells you to set your image output resolution at 300 PPI, if you want that high definition quality, then you'll know they're talking utter bollocks. And if they don't understand the basics of photography around things like image compression, then I'd take everything else they say with a pinch of salt too. 
Now, I mentioned export profiles at the start of this video. Before I wrap things up, I thought I'd share three recommended output profiles for you. Firstly, if you're saving a photo to share on social media, then pretty much everyone's going to be viewing it at tiny dimensions of a few hundred pixels across, and it honestly doesn't matter. Now, put a full size JPEG format, but 70% compression is absolutely fine. If you're exporting in order to upload to your online portfolio or some other website where quality is more critical, then I recommend outputting full size and 80% compression. That 80% setting is the ideal balance between size and quality. It will mean your photos look great in the desktop browser and the page, which let's face it, it's likely to have a lot of photos in it, will load quicker. For either of those examples, social media or web slash portfolio, the resolution, that pixels per inch number, is irrelevant. For print, it's a whole other ball game. You need to be outputting 100% quality and 300 ppi. I'd also consider outputting as a TIFF rather than a JPEG for print, but speak to your printer and they'll tell you what their preferred settings are. So hopefully now there's no mystery around what your output settings should be when you're exporting your photos from your favorite photo editor app. Do you export your social media photos at 300 ppi for that high definition look? Let me know in the comment section below. If you got value from this content, then do consider subscribing to my little channel for more photo, video and drone related content from me. Till the next time, guys. Ta-ta.